I was three years old when I fell in love with fire. The yellow and blue flames captured me. I dove in. Unfortunately, I wasn't badly burned, so I did it again. Later, I became an explorer. I've taken my canoe down many rivers. Each new trip adds to that first fire. This is the story of one river, one trip, on one man's journey. If I were going to start at the beginning, I'd have to go way, way back. But neither of us have that kind of patience. So I'm going to just talk about the nine weeks that I spent traveling last summer in the wilderness. Wilderness, some of you will say. Where could you ever find anything like that in our day and age? Anyway, I think a story should be a personal thing. Not just an account of one day after the next and I put my boots on and my socks dried out. Those are all the facts. Life is what happens between the facts. I finally understand that. If I were gonna start, it'd be like a reverie. by yourself, I think you come closer to the land and come closer to the animals. It's sort of a melding with the environment around you. Here, you're drawn out of yourself. Your eye wanders to distances, looks for the details. Your spirit soaks in all the experiences. I am on my own, that there isn't someone here to pull me out of a rough spot if I get into one. I'll have to rely on myself in all the situations I come across. But there's a funny dividing line. I, I felt it yesterday when I arrived here and was actually left on my own. I didn't feel bad. Very deep down, I didn't feel the isolation and loneliness. I think I just felt more comfortable coming to the back river, being dropped in the middle of nowhere and left. We'll see if that holds up. Can you hear the sound of the ice? It's uh, thousands of little fragments among bigger, bigger fragments. And the Inuit believe that the ice talks to you. It's like being in a rapid or a waterfall, too. They listen long enough, you do begin to hear voices. Ever since finding the journal of Captain George Back of the Royal Navy in a Boston library, I've wanted to go on this trip, retracing his pioneering route to the Arctic Ocean. The Back River runs for 700 miles through the uninhabited tundra of Canada's Northwest Territory. At the beginning, the river is a growing and gathering river, full of shallow rapids with streams and other rivers feeding into it. The middle section of the river is a series of huge open lakes that, according to Captain Back, are very embarrassing to the navigator. Not even a compass works because you're too close to the magnetic North Pole. And then from his descriptions of the last third of the river, the rapids, one after the other after the other, are each bigger than the last. The journal that I'm going to keep this summer is on film. At the beginning and at the end, for a few days, I'll have the assistance of a film crew, but everything in between will rely on what I do. 
I have to be at the end of the river on the day I've told the plane to meet me because the short Arctic summer from June through August will be over and there's no way for me to get out except by being met. I probably won't see another person during the nine weeks I'm out. Even the few Eskimos or Inuit who once lived in these barren lands are gone now. It's so vast, it's like the deepest breath you can imagine, then the largest exhale that could be. It's a beautiful open land, so elemental. There's just the sky, the water, and this thin strip of land around you. It's not high, it's all flat, and the rocks that are the Earth's bones are coming right up through the surface. It's truly a landscape where you're in touch with bigger forces than yourself. I feel very lucky to be actually doing the trip and not just dreaming about it. Perhaps the hardest step in the whole journey was deciding that this was exactly what I was going to do. Well, my parents have never been very excited that I go on these trips because they never know if I'll come back. When I left home, my father was desperately ill. He'd had a major operation on his aorta. He could barely move. And before the operation, he'd been a solid, upstanding curmudgeon that he is. Yeah. For me, the idea of his dying is very hard, but also the idea of myself becoming my own person, equally hard. What are they made of ash? Well, that's a sassafras paddle, actually. It's a very lightweight and flexible. There's a very subtle difference in the attitude between myself and my father and our interpretation of the risk that I'm undertaking. There's so many different kinds of survival. He sees the very palpable risks that I'm letting myself in for by going off on my own for eight weeks. The river could uh, swamp the canoe, I could break my leg in the tundra, I could run out of food, or any other number of little things anybody can think of could happen. But what he doesn't perceive, perhaps, are the tragedies that surround us here of people who are caught in situations that they don't really like and being sort of sawed away at or chipped away at through the daily activity of pursuits that aren't making them greater, better, or happier. Very nice. Well, it'll be fun to go with you, Robbie. Well, I'll be thinking of you. I went to New York because I was trying to please him. I wasn't trying to please myself. So that by doing this trip, I was taking the boldest step in towards my own life that I'd ever taken. The wind will get under it, and away she goes. Well, then it'll be like Dorothy, and I'll get to an interesting place. <laughs> I got it here. Bye. 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 Good luck. Oh. Have a wonderful trip. Bye. 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 Goodbye, darling. We'll be in touch before we start off. I've never Have kissed my father in my life, nor has he ever expected it, but I did feel moved to kiss him goodbye when I left. Hi. Give me a hand up. Here we are. Hey. Okay. His cheek felt very sweaty and very cold. And that day he must have been under a great deal of physical pain. And it must have been hard on him, knowing he wasn't feeling too well and seeing his eldest son go off on what he considered another mission. And I think a little bit of distance helps to give a perspective to uh, relationships of all kinds. I'll certainly have that. <laughs>